Well, good Monday morning to you. Trucker Todd here. We're in the home stretch. It's almost time for Christmas. However, we still got a lot of stuff to get to in the meantime. First of all, I did a video Friday talking about something Schneider is kind of, let's call it beta testing, putting breathalyzers in some of the trucks. And uh, I'll put a link to that video down in the description below in case you missed it. You'll want to check that video out. There's a lot of great information down in the description below. So even if you've seen the video before, uh, check, out, check out the information down there and I'm sure you'll find something that uh, will be of interest to you. Now that video generated a lot of interest. Uh, we got a lot of comments, uh, both good and bad about that and it, it brought up a lot of interesting things that we probably need to talk about a little more um, just to clear, clarify a lot of people were wanting to know what my opinion was on it and uh, you know I try to keep these videos between 10 and 15 minutes so I really kind of ran out of time that one was almost 14 minutes long and I didn't get to say everything I wanted to say now today's video was supposed to be about something that they're calling affectionately the textilizer and we're still going to cover that in that in this video too and uh, it'll go in line with uh, the breathalyzer thing that Schneider is wanting to test in some of their trucks and that uh, James River Transport has already tried in a lot of their trucks and they think drivers are going to be excited about it so I'll tell you what I think in this video and uh, We'll jump right in. I'm gonna fire up the music and we'll hit the topics. Here we go. And this is why I do this, why I'm out here, why I keep that hammer down. Flying by these road signs with home on my mind. With these wheels turning round for my family and for my kids. For this life I wanna live. And this is why I do All right, we're back. Uh, other things that I need you to do, give me a thumbs up, share this video on your social media platforms, and look below this video to make sure you're still subscribed. All right, folks, uh, let's talk about the textilizer first. This is something that's been around a few years, uh, and now they're talking about maybe putting it in vehicles and uh, possibly even trucks. There's been a lot of discussion about it. Let me tell you what I think about the textilizer. Obviously, it's uh, to keep you from texting while you're driving. Now, I've seen several forms of this take shape, and that's why I haven't commented on it prior to now. But basically, uh, there's one version of it where the cops can actually access your phone to see if you've been texting while driving. Now, I've got several problems with that. For one, um, my wife rides with me a lot. How do they know that she's not sending the text? Also, you guys know that I use voice to text for many things. How do they know I didn't use voice to text? And of course, the big elephant in the room that we need to talk about is privacy. And do they have a right to what I would consider a constitutional violation of an illegal search and seizure? Now, Texting and driving is one of those weird things. We all agree it's bad, and I think everybody's done it at some point. We all agree there should be less of it. We all agree there should be none of it. But as I said, I can't think of any cell phone owner that hasn't done some form of it at some point in their life. And uh, so the question becomes what to do about it. Hey, if you want to not text when you drive, there's apps you can download uh, that will prevent you from being able to. When people send you a text, it'll say, hey, I'm driving, I'll answer you when I get parked. And uh, you guys that are driving a truck know your dispatcher would lose their marbles because they're sending you Omnitrax messages and they're sending you texts all the time while you drive. And they know good and well you're not pulling over for every one of those. Even though we all agree, we've already covered that we think you probably should. So if you, uh, feel like it's a problem for you you can download an app like that and fix it 
Secondly, if the cell phone carrier thought it was a problem, they could make your phone to where it didn't work over a certain speed, text messaging that is, or they could make it to where it only worked if you were connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Also, if, the, if car manufacturers wanted to stop it, there's devices that will kill a cell phone signal. They could strategically place them in your car to where if you're sitting in the driver's seat, your phone wouldn't work from the driver's seat location, but the passengers could still use their phone. It'd be really inexpensive and easy to do. They could mount something in the headliner directly above your seat and your phone would not work from the driver's seat. And then they could then rig it to where it only worked if you were using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So this is a problem that everybody likes to talk about, but nobody wants to do anything about. And uh, the last thing we need is government getting involved, making regulations, uh, putting devices in our car to where we're subject to illegal searches and seizures and things along those lines. So, obviously, I feel the same way about the breathalyzer, which was the Friday video that everybody wanted me to comment on. Hey, if you're a company driver and your company wants to do this to you, fine. That's just like working in a warehouse, a factory, or even a restaurant. If your boss says, hey, you've got to wear this uniform to work in order to work here, then you have to wear the uniform. If your boss says, hey, you got to blow in this straw to work here, then you got to blow in that straw to work there. If you don't like it, go get another job. The problem I've got with it is when you're an independent contractor or an owner operator and your company or your finance company says, uh, hey, you got to get this um, in your in your business. No, that's not how it works. Am I an independent contractor? Or am I a company driver? Now, I want to be clear. Dart's not suggesting any of these things. Um, they they do treat you like an owner-operator, and they don't uh, micromanage you and regulate you this way. It's one of the things I love about working here. So this video has nothing to do with Dart, even though I'm wearing a Dart hat. Uh, and they didn't tell me to say anything in this video or any other video. These are just my opinions. But I think the problem in all of trucking, and I told a guy this earlier today, is the fact that we make a distinction between an owner-operator and a lease operator, or an owner-operator and a lease purchase driver. Let me tell you what I mean. Either you're an independent contractor or you're not. And when you start subcategorizing these things, uh, you know, you've heard the saying, divide and conquer. Well, it's easier to conquer us as a whole when you divide it, when you're divided. How your truck is financed should have nothing to do with it. Would you treat me differently if my truck was financed by Bank of America or Wells Fargo or LRM than you would if it was financed at uh, Capital One or somebody like that? No. So the fact that your truck came from a leasing company that is a, a subsidiary of a trucking company or something like that shouldn't affect how you're treated by a company. I cringe when I get the question, uh, you know, one of the questions that really makes me cringe is when people say, well, what's the home time policy over there for lease purchase? You're an independent contractor. Home time's when you say it is. Now, there's some exceptions to that. If you're on a dedicated deal, uh, just as it would be if you was at Landstar or anywhere else. Certain dedicated accounts, things are going to be different. That's part of the contract, part of the deal. But if you're just an over-the-road driver, you set your home time. Now, companies will tell you, if you stay out two weeks, you'll be more profitable. If you stay out three weeks, you'll be more profitable. Those are suggestions, not requirements. And so you determine your home time. And the fact that guys are asking that, means that they've been at companies that regulated those things for an independent contractor. Now, if you're a company driver, yes, there's policies regarding that. But as an independent contractor, you should be making those choices just like you would if your truck's paid off. And, uh, you know, for a long time, people used to say, 
Well, you're nothing more than a glorified company driver if you're doing a lease purchase. And to that, I would say, well, if you're in that kind of a lease purchase, then you're in a bad one. And I've said in a lot of my videos, most lease purchases are bad. I'm not saying they're all bad. The Dart one is definitely great. It's not the only great one. There's a few other great ones. Uh, there's several pretty good ones, but there's an overwhelming majority of bad ones. And you need to do your due diligence. I hate that word, by the way. And you need to be uh, looking for a company that's going to treat you right and that's going to treat you like an independent contractor. If they're not, then you need to just be a company driver and let them pay your payroll taxes and everything. So I don't know that I've answered this as well as I wanted to, but I hope I've cleared this up for you. Um, this is, uh, we're going the wrong way here. If uh, people get into trucking, I said this on Friday, for the freedom and a lot of people, because they like to travel. Um, they don't want to be in an office with somebody looking over their shoulder. And the more we make this like an office job and have people looking over our shoulder and micromanaging, the less people that are going to want to get in the industry. Hey, you want to know why uh, this so-called trucking, trucking shortage? Try to find a truck parking place at a truck stop right now and then tell me what a trucking shortage we have. But beside that, if you're trying to get more truckers into the industry and you can't figure out why this new generation uh, doesn't want to do it, it may be because they're tired of regulations. They don't want to go into the most heavily regulated industry and uh, be told they got to breathe in a straw to work here. They got to have a deal in their truck that uh, that monitors their text messages or uh, like the Walmart policy. I understand they've modified it a little bit, but the Walmart policy where you've got to show them your phone records if they ask for them and uh, prove that you weren't on your phone more than an hour a day. I think they've increased it to like four hours a day or something. It really doesn't matter. The fact that they would even consider policies like that makes Walmart a no-go for me. And to be honest, it should be a no-go for you. You know, they do ads all the time. Uh, we pay our first-year drivers $89,500. i have seen some say $96,000. If you're paying eighty five dollars to 96000 a year and you still can't get drivers, Maybe the problem's not your pay. Maybe the problem is you as a company. Think about that, Walmart. But anyway, I've ranted enough for today. Um, I guess you guys are getting a bonus this week. This video turned out to be a rant. And then we'll have the Christmas rant on Wednesday. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you're making it towards the house if that's where you want to go. And we'll catch you on the next one. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.